Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of Z Code System here on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the Euros, which are being played right now across Europe, and they are going great, I guess you could say. Um, a lot of fun watching these games. I just finished watching the Scotland Czech Republic game, Czech Republic winning 2 0 against Scotland uh, in a game I actually thought that they would have trouble winning, um, but they ended up coming out on top 2 0. And today we're going to look here on our YouTube channel at some games coming up on Wednesday which will be June the 16th, and that will be the start of the second games for each group stage here at the Euros. So, of course, you can always go over to zcodesystem.com backslash blog, and you can read up on all of the picks that we post there. As you can see right in front of you, we've got some picks uh, that were for yesterday's games uh, in Major League Baseball. Uh, Cardinals and Cubs, they were playing those games. And if I scroll down, we've also got some other things going up. The success stories there. Frank, Zcode member. So a great success story there to read up on and to find out how Z-Code system can work for you, uh, as well as I've previewed the Copa America 2021, which is being played in South America. It's basically South America's version of the Euros, uh, and they're being played down there. Uh, they got kicked off yesterday with Brazil playing, and they're going to be uh, continuing on uh, throughout the month of June and into July. And if you like your South American football or you just want uh, some more football to bet on, then go over there, uh, read that, and then get on to your favorite sports book and bet on those games. And then, of course, we have the Euro 2020 tournament preview there on the website. You can always go over to the YouTube page because I previewed uh, that last week in a video prior to the tournament kicking off. So go on to there, uh, go to YouTube or go to the blog there. You can read, you can watch, and you can find out more about the Euros, uh, my picks, uh, who are going to win it or who might not or who might win it, um, and uh, some other information that I've I talked about and wrote about. And of course, we've got the contrarian tool. How does it work? You can go over to the blog, find out about that, read up about it, and uh, begin using that in your sports betting. So like I said, this is the YouTube page for Z Code System. You're probably watching this video here on YouTube, possibly on the blog, but if you've not uh, watched the videos on the on the YouTube page and you've strictly watched them on the blog, well, you're missing out because we post a lot of stuff there that does not actually show up on the blog and you can go over and watch these videos. And you can see there the video that I did last week for the Euro 2020 tournament. Um, very exciting uh, tournament so far and uh, a lot going on. So we're going to take a look at three games now today for Wednesday, June the 16th. And let's take a look at those games right now, courtesy of the Soccer Buddy tool. Okay, so if you've watched any of our videos here on YouTube or on the blog or you've read the blog, then you will know that we love to use the Soccer Buddy tool when we make our picks and predictions for football matches and soccer matches. Um, so I've used the tool here for the 16th of June. We've got the Euros, which I've selected, and I've also got a hot trend going on there. We can see a hot trend for that Russia versus Finland game where we are five for six predicting totals over 1.5 in games with Russia in their last six games. So you might want to get on that. All right. So we've got uh, these three games that are going to be played on Wednesday across Europe. We've got Wales taking on Turkey. We've got Russia taking on Finland, Switzerland playing Italy. Now, I'm going to discuss these games here for us and uh, give you my picks. Now, you've got the picks right here for the Soccer Buddy tool, um, and the Soccer Buddy tool is giving us a 2-1 score prediction in each game. Uh, you might want to go with that, uh, but you might want to hear some of the things I have to say and maybe go with a, a little bit of the information I'm going to give you because I'm going to change. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go against a couple of these, uh, let's say. Uh, I'm going to go a couple of, against a couple of these scores, um, and um, I'll tell you why. Now, of course, if you don't know about the Soccer Buddy tool and you've never used it, you can always hit how it works and get the tutorial on using it and, well, how it works. All right, so looking at these games here, um, let's start with that Wales versus Turkey game. Now, we've got Wales going to this game after coming from behind on in their first match uh, against Switzerland to get a 1-1 draw. Very good game uh, that was played on Saturday. And uh, we saw Wales play very defensively early on. They soaked up a lot of pressure. Um, Switzerland having a few chances, but not very many uh, early in that game. Uh, but after halftime, Switzerland were able to score through Briel in Bolo. Um, and to be honest, early on in that second half, Switzerland was really good. Um, but as the half wore on um, and as uh, Swiss coach uh, Vladimir Pekovic took off Zerj Kiri, uh, we saw Switzerland uh, start to start to lose some con some control in that second half, and we saw Wales come back 
uh, and playing pretty well um, as that game was coming to an end. They'd snatch the 1-1 draw uh, with a goal from Kiefer Moore late on in the game, 74th minute, I believe it was. And now Wales go into uh, this Group A second match with one point. Um, and in my opinion, if they can get a win against Turkey, that should be all, it might be enough. Let's say, let's, let's say it might be enough to get them into the um, the knockout stages. Now, remember, it's the top two teams per each group plus the four best third place teams. So Wales can certainly be one of those good third place teams, one of those three best third place teams. Um, you know, and if four points could get them into that next round. So um, I really like their chances against Turkey because Turkey opening night of the Euros last Friday, they were thrashed by Italy 3-0 and really, really were never in the game. Uh, Italy just pressured them throughout the uh, the first and second half. Uh, it did take Italy till the second half to get goals, but when they did, they got three. Uh, Turkey um, were very poor going forward. Uh, in that first half, Burek Ilmaz was just on an island on his own. Uh, Italy's defense struggle, uh, strangled him, smothered him. Um, and really, Turkey, the best they did uh, was late in the game when Chingis Under was brought on uh, by coach uh, Sunel Gones, um, and he was brought on and he was able to stretch uh, Italy a little bit. He had a lot of pace uh, and was able to, to get behind some of the defenders, but overall Turkey not good on the day. Now I expect them to be much better against Wales, uh, and I would think that under will start this game and they will try to use his pace to um, get the best of Wales defense. Um, we might see Wales manager Rob Page make a few changes. I wouldn't be surprised to see Harry Kane, uh, sorry, not Harry Kane, uh, Harry Wilson come in to the team uh, in the starting 11. Um, and I, I would really like to see more from Gareth Bale. I didn't think he did that great uh, during the game. Uh, and it was really key for Moore, um, their lone striker who, who was doing much of the uh, much of the work uh, in attack. So what we could see is we could see um, some more uh, flashes from Bale in this game. And if Bale could show up and and show some glimpses of what made him so good five years ago at the Euro 2016 tournament, then I think Wales can definitely get a win in this game. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see this game end in a draw. I think Wales are good enough. I think I think they're good enough to get a point in this game. Uh, and Turkey played so poorly uh, on that in that first game, uh, and their performance was so bad that it should really give everybody else hope. Wales and Switzerland hope that um, they can take second or third place away from the Turkish team. Um, like I said, I like a draw in this game. Uh, Wales, not necessarily if Bale's not on, they don't have a lot of great goal scoring. Um, uh, options. Um, but to be honest, Turkey did not show that they were great in attack uh, in that first game either. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a draw here between these two teams. Now, um, we've got Russia and Finland. That's going to be the second game. Uh, excuse me, that's going to be the first game um, on the day on uh, Wednesday. And this is from uh, Group B, I guess it is, uh, with Finland and Russia playing. Now, both teams uh, had differing um, first days of the tournament on Saturday. Russia were defeated by Belgium 3-0. Uh, they were never at the races. They were poor on the day. Uh, and Belgium, remember, they're the number one ranked team in the world, and a lot of people have them favorites to win this tournament, along with France and England. Um, and they were they were always second best uh, against Belgium. You got to wonder where the goals are going to come from from this Russia team. They're not great uh, in attack, um, and to be fair, they weren't great in defense against Belgium. Um, I expect them to be much better um, from front to back against Finland. As you can see, they're they're the odds on favorites. Now, Finland did win on opening day uh, with their opening day, but we've got to take that with a grain of salt. Uh, if you've been watching the Euros, you will know about uh, what occurred uh, during the Denmark Finland game. Uh, I don't want to go into it. Um, it was really uh, difficult to watch. Uh, I was watching that game, and um, it was difficult to watch and to take that all in. Um, if you know, if you were watching, if you were following the Euros, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and the game was postponed or, or delayed uh, for a few hours. And against what they should have done, uh, they ended up, Denmark and Finland went out and played um, the game later on. With, uh, with Finland ending up winning 1-0 and uh, Denmark really not having their heads in the game. Um, so you've got to take that result with a grain of salt. Finland, uh, they're playing in their first ever Euros uh, this year. They do have some good players. Timu Puki is a, is a really good striker um, that they have. He plays for Norwich City, who will be playing in the Premier League again next season. But 
you've got to question just how good this Finland team really is. If things wouldn't have things would have been different, let's say on Saturday, they may not have uh, come out with a win. Um, they did show a lot of strengths um, during that game, and I think they're going to be difficult for Russia to beat. I don't think it's going to be a two-one scoreline. Um, I actually think it might be a one-nil uh, scoreline to Russia uh, to pick up a win. Um, you know, but the thing is. Uh, Finland could, you know, Finland could get hot. They could be one of those teams at the Euros. We saw it uh, in 2016 with Hungary, and we saw it with Wales. Uh, they could be one of those teams that gets hot in the group stage. They get enough, you know, they get enough points to get through to the knockout stage. And, and I think they could end up doing that in the end. They do have a tough game on uh, match day three of the group stage against Belgium, so uh, that could um, prevent that from happening. But um, I think they'll give Russia a very difficult game. But I think ultimately, I think they're going to lose this game to Russia. Now, talking about Denmark in that Group B, and they're going to be playing Belgium, but that's going to be on Thursday. Um, I, I want to say that because of everything that happened on Saturday, I, I'm going to. I want to say that Denmark just aren't going to have it mentally um, to to come back and and do well at the tournament. Um, but by all means. This could be one of those things where they rally together um, and they they play really hard and they do really well. Um, again, I don't want to go into to what happened. It was tough to watch. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's probably the thing that's going to be the most lasting um, uh, aspect about this tournament. So uh, anyhow, I'm picking Russia to win this game. I think it's going to be a very narrow game. I think it's going to be 1-0 um, to the Russians uh, to beat Finland. Now... <clears throat> To finish out the day on Wednesday, uh, we got this really good game uh, that I'm excited to watch, and that's Italy versus Switzerland. Now, a little inside baseball right here. I told you on the video um, for the preview of the Euro 2020 tournament that I really like France to win this tournament. Um, France are the favorites, or they were the favorites um, the first day. Well, sorry, excuse me. They were the favorites pre-tournament from all the sports books. Uh, they've not played as of this uh, video. They've not played yet uh, in the tournament. They're going to play Germany in their first game. Uh, odds could be tweaked after that game, depending on the result. Now, I told you also in that video that I liked one of the dark horses. I liked Italy to win this tournament. I think Italy are absolutely brilliant. I want to say they've won now nine games in a row without conceding a goal. Uh, they're on a brilliant run of form, and they absolutely thrashed Turkey. They didn't just thrash Turkey, scoring goals. They played brilliantly defensively. The, the high press that uh, Roberto Mancini has instituted with uh, with Italy, um, you had the three forwards for uh, Italy basically with their boots on the 18-yard box of Turkey putting pressure on them and making, forcing um, Turkey's uh, goalkeeper to kick the ball along uh, from the goal kicks and um, basically winning the ball back from there. This is a great, okay, I won't say great. This is a very good Italy team that could become great. And a little inside baseball, I've done a you know a pre-match bet on Italy to win this tournament. Um, that's the team that I have picked. So a little inside baseball there. Um, even though I'd said in the video previously, I like France to win this tournament. I've gone with a dark horse, um, money-wise, <laughs> to, to win this tournament. So um, I've put my money on Italy to win. Now, they're taking on Switzerland, uh, who, like I said, they played uh, Wales um, and, and you know were looking good to win that game until late on and then ended up drawing. Couldn't keep the lead. Um, they ended up almost taking the lead back. Uh, unfortunately, an, uh, a goal was ruled out due to being off sides. Now, Switzerland are not a bad team. So let's not let's just let's just say that right now. Switzerland are not a bad team. They're just not to the level of Italy. They just don't have the attacking players um, that the top teams at the Euros have. Okay, then I, and I, to be honest, on in the game against Wales, I was very impressed with Briel uh, Imbolo. Um, he's a player that's always been hit and miss at the club level and a player that has basically um, a lot of, uh, excuse me, a lot was expected of him, but he's never fulfilled uh, those expectations. He was absolutely brilliant against Wales. I don't think he's going to have the space and the time on the ball against Italy's defense and midfield. Um, the rest of Switzerland's attack uh, that started that game um, was not very good, except for maybe Zerdin Shakiri. He had the assist on the goal uh, for Imbolo in that game against Wales, and I think he uh, I think he can have a a good game against Italy. 
that said, uh, Coach Vladimir Pekovic took off Shakiri in the second half, and it was really after that point that's when Wales started to have a little bit more um, uh, influence on the game, and they were able to get their goal. Now, um, like I said, Italy played brilliantly. Um, I, I love Chiro Mobile, uh, one of their, their forwards, their striker. He's played in the first game, uh, scored a goal, um, and uh, Lorenzo Insigne got a goal as well. And... Um, slips my mind the third person who got a goal for Italy but the front three of Italy were very very good and to be honest Roberto Mancini has no reason to rotate his side um, he may have an issue at right back Alessandro Florenzi uh, came off in the first game there against Turkey with a slight injury um, the medical team is working on him they've said that he could play uh, but Mancini may just hold him out just to prevent any um, lasting injuries because this is um, this isn't a marathon this is uh, this is a race this is um, you know, knockout high level international football. So there's no reason to risk him if you don't have to. Um, so we could see uh, someone else come in at right back to play this game against Switzerland and then Florenzi slot back in against that in that game against Wales. Um, by all intents and purposes, I think Italy will beat Wales in the third game. And in this game, I think it'll be very close. I don't think Italy are going to concede a goal to Switzerland. That defense is just too good. Like I said, I think it's nine games now without conceding a goal in international play. Italy look fantastic. This is like the Italy of old, but with a twist. This Italy can attack. They play high press football and it's high intensity. They did not stop against Turkey. Even in the 90th minute, they were pressing as hard as possible, trying to win back the ball. There was no let up in this team. And like I said, they were a dark horse coming in. I've bet on them. I've put my money on them. And I think they're going to do brilliantly um, throughout the tournament. And if they beat it's uh, Switzerland, which I think they will, and I think it's going to be around one to two, one nil or two nil, I think this is a team that everybody's going to start lo looking at and be like, oh, okay, this this might be the team that is to beat. But we've seen some really good performances so far um, in the tournament. Belgium were great, uh, three nil winners over Russia, like I said. Um, you know, England picked up a, a, it was a one nil win against Croatia yesterday. Um, actually, I'm gonna, not going to lie; it was a bit of a boring game um throughout but uh italy or excuse me england were able to pick up a victory um again those are all teams that are supposed to be there or there about uh, as this tournament comes to uh you know comes to an end now we've got those big games like i said coming up with france and germany i think i guess those games are going to go on tomorrow um off the top of my head those games that game will be going on tomorrow that's gonna be a really good game can't wait to watch that um but, you know, I, I think we're going to see uh, a very weak Germany team overall um, with France continuing to show that they are a very strong side. Uh, and then tonight we've got Spain taking on Sweden. And, you know, by all intents and purposes, Spain should win that game and, you know, show that they are one of the top teams in the tournament. All right, guys. So that is our picks and preview for the Euro Games, Euro 2020 tournament games coming up on Wednesday and that is Wednesday, June the 16th, just um, around 36 to 48 hours from now. I'm looking forward to these games, especially that Switzerland-Italy game. Looking really, really forward to that game. And um, if you guys have any games that you want us to preview here on the YouTube channel, um, let me know. Put it in the comments below and let me know, and we can preview those games. I've picked these games because I think there's, uh, you know, I, th I think these are all three very big games uh, coming up on Wednesday with some teams that, um, you know, can get through to the group stage, uh, get through the group stage, I should say, and get into the knockout rounds. All right, so comment below. Let me know what you think and who you're backing and, you know, what games you want to see previewed coming up as we go on in the uh, second stage of the group stage, excuse me, the second match day of the group stage and the third match day. Uh, and also, of course, as always, like and subscribe to the channel and stay up to date on everything we do at Zcode System. And of course, if you're not a member of Zcode System, you're missing out on all the tools that we use there, especially the Soccer Buddy tool. Uh, get over there, subscribe, and get on all of these tools that help you bet and make your picks on all of these great sports that we have from around the world. And if you're a soccer lover, if you are a soccer better, you've got all of these different leagues. And this is just for June 16th right there on your screen. Um, you know, get all these leagues to, to go through and to pick games from. So get on that. And I will see you next time here on Z Code System on YouTube.